Welcome to the Advanced Tactics Series, Commander. In this video, we're reviewing every major combat role a mech can fill, so you can start to use them more effectively in our lances. If you watch the end, I'll give you a tactic for each type of mech that you can use on the battlefield. The first role is Battle Line. They're your front line that the rest of the army fights around. In modern day 3025, you can identify Battle Line mechs by their modest speed of 4-6, but high defensive stats. They're typically heavy mechs, classified as brawlers by Comstar, but this isn't always the case. Offensively, they're usually armed with a few long or medium range weapons, but the majority of their damage is focused at brawl range, that is, 6 hexes or less. Functionally, battle line mechs are built to both take damage and dish it back out. Their job is to block enemy battle line mechs from pushing onto more fragile range units and usually find themselves activating early in their initiative to absorb punishment. The classic mercenary battle line mech is the Thunderbolt, a 4-6 mover with armor in the 200s. It has a LRM-15 and a large laser for long to medium range, but most of its weapons are focused around the brawl with its three medium lasers and SRM-2. Another example is the Lyran Commonwealth Flashman, also a 4-6 mover with armor in the 200s. It uses an all-energy build, which makes it very resistant to critical hits, but in exchange has no LRM, so it has a bit of a shorter range. A common tactic for a battle line mech is to activate early in initiative to absorb damage. Here the Thunderbolt activates and intentionally walks into harm's way, drawing the attack from the enemy brawler so the more fragile trebuchet can get in a better defensive position. The next role is ranged. You can think of these mechs like 17th century archers or cannons. Speed wise they move at 4-6 or 3-5 and move slower once the battle starts because they like to push their heat to do extra damage. Defense is high to moderate, as they're expected to stand and trade with longer range weapons. They'll typically have a few close range weapons as backup, but that's not the ideal situation. During a fight, they're meant to be sitting behind the battle line mechs and doing damage. Good examples of this are the Longbow 7Q, a slow 3-5 mover armed with 50 long range missiles, and the Catapult K2 armed with two PPCs. Both mechs have only two medium lasers and lack arms, which makes them vulnerable if anything closes to hand to hand combat. The key thing to remember with range mechs commander is that even though they can fight at their long range bracket, shooting while suffering from a plus 4 accuracy penalty is not ideal. When the battle lines start coming together, bringing your range mechs into their medium range bracket for a plus 2 accuracy penalty is critical to winning the fight. Mech on mech warfare isn't just all about standing and shooting in a firing line though. Next we'll be covering the mechs that are often the all stars of your mech rosters. The cavalry mechs. Speed of these mechs is above average at 5.8. 585 or 464. They have moderate amounts of defense and are typically classified as skirmishers by Comstar. Weapons tend to vary, but most prefer to get in close to tear into their opponent's weak spots. During a fight, the cavalry mech's job is to usually disrupt battle line and range mechs. They want to put these mechs into awkward positions and get into their rear and sides. One of the best cavalry mechs available to us as mercenaries is the Wolverine 6M, a fast 585 mover with armor in the mid 100s. It's equipped with a large laser for piercing and an SRM-6 to exploit any gaps in armor. On top of that, it has extended torso twist and so can attack in nearly any angle. A few mechs of this class like the Dervish have smaller LRMs combined with lasers. These mechs are usually played with more finesse rather than all-out aggression. They use their speed to pick the best range to fight at in order to generate favorable trades. The cousins of the cavalry mechs are the scouts. These mechs have the highest speed, moving at 696 or more, but have very little protection. They usually just have short range weapons and use their speed to get in close. This is similar to cavalry mechs, but scouts are generally worse overall in a fight and are typically better at performing reconnaissance. One of the most efficient scouts a mercenary company can use is the Locust, whose compact mech quirk lets two of them be transported in a single mech bay. There are two useful tactics that can be done with both scout and cavalry mechs. The first is the waiting move, also known as the initiative sink. Here we activate a low battle value mech early in the initiative and move it to a safe position. This forces the opponent to play another move and helps give us more information about his intentions. We can then move our more valuable heavies and assaults into their ideal weapons range. When using the waiting move, keep in mind running to a completely safe position is fine, but moving to a position that can threaten an attack on the next turn is even better. The second tactic is the strike. It's the opposite of the waiting move and is usually done when the lance wins the initiative roll. To perform this maneuver, hold the cavalry mech back until the last or near last turn and maneuver it in for the perfect attack. This will typically be into the rear or side of the mech that has an open location. That being said, Commander, there are a few key differences between scouts and cavalry mechs that we should take into consideration when building our mercenary company. 
First, while both mechs can perform their strike and waiting maneuver, cavalry mechs are often better at striking than scouts because of their higher damage. But when it comes to the waiting move, scouts are often better to use because they cost less battle value. A premium cavalry unit like a wolverine has a battle value nearly as high as the thunderbolts. So making the wolverine wait for a few turns means we're keeping a lot of our power out of the fight. There are also differences with ease of use. Cavalry mechs tend to be more forgiving because of their better defense. A cavalry pilot can usually make a few mistakes and survive, where a single mistake from a scout will often result in the mech being destroyed. Because of the cavalry mech's better offense, durability, and ability to perform reconnaissance well enough, leads me to believe we should only start taking scout mechs when our mercenary unit grows to battalion size or larger. A company size unit or smaller should use the limited space on their dropship to take cavalry mechs who can perform both reconnaissance and have a bigger impact on a fight. We'll be covering this more in depth in our upcoming Mercenary Doctrine video. The next role is the Bodyguard. These mechs protect friendly battle line and range units from enemy cavalry. Bodyguards typically move at 4-6 or a bit faster at 4-6-4, which is enough to keep up with the battle lines they protect and intercept attackers. They are typically of the medium or lightweight class and classified as brawlers. Bodyguard mechs tend to share the same weapons brackets as the battle line mechs that they're defending having something to do at longer ranges, but really shining at 6 X's or less. Because they have smaller engines than cavalry and scouts, lets them pack on more weapons and armor to properly challenge them. Bodyguards fulfill two job functions. First, to fend off scouts and cavalry trying to flank, and second, to help battle line mechs win fights. The classic example of a bodyguard mech is the Centurion. It has the same speed as the Thunderbolt, meaning the two can move together. On top of that, it shares the same weapons brackets. When the Thunderbolt's LRM is in range, the Centurion's will be too. The large laser of the Thunderbolt also has the same range as the Centurion's AC-10. And finally, both mechs have brawl weapons when ranges finally close. In a fight, bodyguard mechs usually start slightly behind the battle line mechs, so the more protected mech takes damage first, and then either fan out to challenge cavalry or scouts, punishing them in the event they move to attack the mech they're defending, or move to help the battle line if there's no fast-moving threat adding their damage to the battle line in order to win the fight. Now these, in my opinion, are the five general rules that make it easier for us to classify and think about mechs. But there are a few exceptions that break this mold. Mechs that can play multiple roles and be used by a commander to adapt to the situation. But before we go over those mechs, I want to mention two specialist roles that while we won't be often using ourselves, we'll likely be facing off against at one point or another during our mercenary contracts. The first is the Ambusher. These are typically slow, lightly armored mechs with high damage. As the name implies, they rely on lying in wait and then popping out for a short-range attack. The classic example of this is the AC-20 armed urban mech R-60L. While mercenary companies will not often take these specialist mechs because of the limited space on a dropship, they do find their place in successor state garrison units, so we'll likely encounter a few of these eventually. The next specialist role is the linebreaker. These are typically slow, 3-5 movers who have very high armor and high damage at brawl range. Their job is to break open the battle line like a battering ram. Classic examples of these types of mechs are the King Crab and Atlas. Fights involving linebreakers usually become very bloody and winner takes all. So while we may be able to afford these iconic mechs, Commander, I have to recommend against using them due to their risky fighting style. It's not the type of volatility that we want when trying to run a mercenary company in the long term. Okay. Now that we've gone over the two specialist roles, let's go over the hybrid mechs. These mechs perform multiple roles, and by doing so, give the lance more flexibility. Let's take a look at the popular Warhammer and Crusader mechs as an example. The Warhammer and Crusader are both hybrid mechs, designed to play the ranged and battle line roles. Both mechs move at 4-6, have armor levels under 200, and are relatively vulnerable to critical hits. This means, if they start the fight on the battle line, it won't be very long until they're opened up and risk becoming destroyed by an ammunition explosion. Luckily, both mechs have long-range weapons. The Crusader uses double LRMs, similar to the Archer, and the Warhammer carries double PPCs, like the Catapult K2. So they should start the battle fighting at the ranged role, staying in good cover and keeping their armor high. Then, as the battle progresses and enemy mechs start to have exposed structure, they should swap over to the battle line role to finish mechs off with their close-range weapons. A large benefit to having hybrid mechs like these is that they're less dependent on lance mates. Unlike the longbow, which would need help if it got attacked by a cavalry mech, a warhammer can shift to its battle line role and act as its own backup reasonably well. 
This independence opens up additional opportunities when designing lances and companies. Because the hybrid Warhammer is less reliant on a bodyguard, the unit may be able to swap out the bodyguard mech for a mech of the different role. There are a number of hybrid combinations that we don't have time to go over now, Commander, but a few that I feel would be particularly valuable to a mercenary company like ours would be the Vulcan as a scout cavalry hybrid, the Catapult as a ranged cavalry hybrid, the Grasshopper as a cavalry battle line hybrid, and the Hunchback as a bodyguard linebreaker. Now that we understand all the roles a mech can play, Commander, we can apply what we've learned and start designing effective lances in the next video. After that, we'll put everything together to create an entire mercenary battalion featuring combined arms. Yeah, we ran out of patience For your love with the cold hard hatred I can feel the vibration Faith in the streets, it's a new sense